So the next part of the exam is to evaluate someone while they're standing and we go through some dynamic tests to evaluate uh, their muscle strength and their function. It also gives me a good sense of uh, the spinal alignment as well to see if any of these potential problems in the lower extremity may be coming from the back. So first thing I have you do, Peter, is to face that way. Uh, I'm first checking to see if the shoulder heights are the same, as well as I'll grab the iliac crest on either side to make sure that it's even. Next, I'll have you bend forward. I say, try to touch your toes if you can. Great, and then I have you stand up, and I'm looking at the alignment of the spine, and then to lean back, all the while asking if any of these movements hurt. Okay, stand up straight, and then twist to the right, twist to the left, straight forward, bend to the right, and bend to the left. And I'm just getting a general assessment if, 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 that's, if they're capable of doing that and whether that elicits any pain. While Peter's facing away from me, I'll have him go up on his toes and I can get a good sense of his heel alignment. You can come back down. The angle of the foot is very important. I'm looking at the heel alignment. And when someone goes up on their toes, I wanna to make sure that their heel goes into varus and that they recreate their arch. Peter has good arches here. And sometimes that's a clue as to potential problems, whether it be the hip, the knee, or even the ankle. Okay, then I have him turn around and I do the same thing again. Again, I just wanna have him go up on his toes. I get a better sense of the formation of the arch and balance as well, and then you go flat down on the feet. Next part of the standing exam is to do some dynamic tests. So first thing I'll have someone do is to lift up the one of the legs. Usually I'll do, if, if the person's complaining of right hip pain, I'll have them uh, stand on the other side so that um, I wanna see what they can do with their quote unquote normal side. So first thing I want you to do is just stand on one leg on the left side and try to hold balance. And you hold it there to see if, that, if there's any swaying from side to side, how much their body shifts over that side, or if they're having trouble balancing. And then I have them do the opposite side as well. What we're looking for here is to see if the pelvis tilts also. If the pelvis tilts during this maneuver, it may mean that the hip abductors, particularly the gluteus medius, may be either injured, it could be torn, or it could be weak, or it could be a neurologic problem where the muscle's not firing. You could stand up straight. Then I have someone do a two-legged squat and come back up. With what, what do they do with their hands? So, I don't have them do anything with the hands. I wanna see what they do first. I wanna see how they're used to doing it. Um, sometimes I'll change that up, for example. And some, how do you want their feet? Do you want this to be a narrow squat, a wide squat? I ask them, I, first I let them do what they wanna do. I wanna see what's comfortable for them and how they're normally squatting. Some people keep their foot feet yeah. outward. Some people go really close. Um, and some people put their arms up. Some people put it on their chest. So I just wanna see what, their, what yeah. their, their normal is, what's comfortable for them. Some people don't do squats regularly, so they're not really interested in form. And to be honest, I'm not really interested in form either for this particular part. I just wanna see how their body's reacting to that movement. I guess not, if you just said squat in the easiest way you could, if you had to spend a day down here, what would you, how would you do it? It would probably be at this angle. Right. Right, and most people can't stick, do that either. And the other thing I'm, I'm looking for is, come back up, is some people will put their arms straight up in the air when they squat, uh, and that tilts their pelvis. And so sometimes it's easier to do that because, they're, because it, what it does is it, it accentuates the lordosis of the spine, which tilts the pelvis forward, and that will affect the hip flexors. So if they do that first, I'll have them change to bring their arms down, try to make their back a little flatter and do the same squat to see if there's any change in the motion at the hip. Okay. Um, the next thing I do, so then I get a good sense of their balance. I get a good sense of their hip musculature. Uh, and then I wanna check um, their, their 
natural connective tissue. So some people have connective tissue disease. We have something called the Baten score where we get a sense of if someone has uh, loose ligaments. Ehlers-Danlos would be an example of a connective tissue disorder that I wanna know about because that may mean they have specific injuries. So it's a, basically a nine point scale. The first thing I do is I, I check to see if their pinky goes to 90 degrees, if their thumb comes to their forearm, on either side, that's each of those is one point. If they hyperextend their elbows greater than 10 degrees, same with their knees. And then I wanna see if they could put their hands on the floor. So I could tell right away, Peter doesn't have connective tissue disease, even though he can do that. The, yeah, other, the other things don't add up to enough. Exactly, exactly. 